I said no. My name is Robert Leger. This is my presentation about the, we call it the Yellow Jacket Free Home. Basically, understanding the Yellow Jacket lifestyle to effectively trap and reduce Yellow Jacket nests near you. Hopefully, a little bit of time in the spring for trapping, and you can take the summer off. Uh, so, some tips and tricks. How many folks here actively trap for yellow jackets? Cool. How many people are thinking about it? All right. Hopefully, uh, maybe some new things to learn here. Maybe help uh, help you trap. So, first some disclaimers. I'm an engineer. I'm a scientist. So, the information presented here is basically from online research and my personal observations. Uh, doing. Uh, yellow jacket trapping at home over the last 10 years or so. No true scientific studies here, it's just my observations. Um, but understanding the life cycle of the yellow jackets, I've been able to basically eliminate yellow jackets near our home for about eight of the last 10 years. And by that I mean we might see three or four yellow jackets buzzing around at the height of summer. So quick outline of the presentation and talk about a little bit about yellow jacket identification. This is mostly because I wanted to do this as a standalone presentation that could be distributed. I think most people here can probably identify yellow jackets fairly well, but for people who might read this later, it's more for better benefit. Talk about the life cycle of the yellow jacket, which is key to understanding when and how to trap. Queen markings, so you know um, if you've got queens. Habits and yellow jacket food sources. And uh, trap options, bait <coughs> options, and some tips. At the end, uh, I'll take, take questions, because otherwise I'll get distracted and fall <coughs> off on tangents. And uh, I've got a link at the end if you want to download this. Uh, maybe snap a photo of the address, because it's complex, or uh, you're welcome to put it on any Facebook page or whatever for the group. Quick um, definition of yellow jackets from Wikipedia. A few things I wanted to point out. They're wasps. They have distinctive markings. They live in colonies. Some people call them social wasps. And uh, characteristic rapid side-to-side -side flight patterns as they're landing. Op observing yellow jackets over the years, it's, it's helped me uh, be able to pick out what's that flying insect in the yard. Uh, so, quick photo, this is a good one. This is a queen. It's listed as a European wasp by Wikipedia. You notice they're more shiny, uh, less hairy, not fuzzy and cute like our honeybees. Some other photos of yellow jackets, upper left, you may have seen this uh, image before as the, honey, as the yellow jackets are staring you down from on top of your hives, menacing you, daring you to do anything about it. Uh, upper right, we've got a, uh, a worker yellow jacket on the left and a queen on the right. Notice the size difference there. Uh, lower left here is a ground dwelling nest. You may have seen these before. They've got pretty regular entrance holes. Uh, and here on the right is a foraging worker. Foraging on a nectar, that's what the adult workers feed on. Uh, not going to go into this in too much detail. It's just show, I thought this was a good slide showing the differences between stinging insects, uh, honeybees, bumblebees, yellow jackets, labdabbers, hornets. Some comparisons, quick comparison on the left here, we've got a yellow jacket, known as a western yellow jacket. On the right, uh, this is listed as a European paper wasp. Uh, one of the things that I noticed on the abdomen of, the, of this wasp, it's more sleek and curved. Uh, the yellow jacket seems a little more stocky. Um, oops. This guy here on the left uh, is one of a pair of solitary wasps that live on the side of our house. They were there all summer, they didn't bother us, they came and did their thing. Uh, 
We, I don't consider them a nuisance. Uh, this is more focused on nuisance uh, wasps, like yellow jackets. On the right, this is listed as a hornet. It's, I believe, larger. I don't know much about hornets. I don't know if we have hornets around here. But for a size comparison, it said this had bee parts. And I believe that there's probably a bee head. Give you a little bit of scale. Uh, and this, I just love the photo. Uh, mud dauber. These are solitary wasps. They're not social wasps. Very beneficial. If you see these, you can. If they're not bothering you, please let them be. Uh, so the yellow jacket life cycle, this is the key to the whole, uh, the whole idea here is if you know the life cycle and understand it, you can uh, trap effectively, and that is trapping the queens early in the spring when they're vulnerable. And if you can diligently bait your traps in the spring and you catch your queens, uh, the life cycle ends there. The brood won't survive, uh, the colony won't grow larger, and in the fall they won't be sending out new queens for next year. So more detail on the life cycle. Uh, in the fall, fertilized queens will go out, and you may find hibernating queens in your yard, in your wood pile, in your leaves. They're going to look kind of like this here in color. They may look dead, but they're not. If you're feeling brave, you can breathe a little warm air on them, and they'll start to react. They're not going to fly up and steam you in the face because they're still kind of groggy and hibernating. But at that point, my policy is smash with a big rock, and you've just eliminated a potential nest in the, the coming year. So a fertile queen will leave, leave a nest. They seek a suitable location to overwinter like your wood pile under the eaves of your house and attic space maybe. And in the early spring when the temperatures are getting warmer, they'll go out and they'll look for a suitable nest, nesting spot. Might be an old rodent burrow underground that they can start a nest in. Might be a uh, crack in the side of your siding and in your wall cavities at home. Like we had the summer we got married. and. Um, so basically at that point, you've got a single, the queen is basically a single mother. She has to go out, find a nest site, start building the nest, uh, and she'll lay, lay some eggs, and she has to go out and hunt food to feed the brood. So we've got this about three, four week window in the spring where the queen is very vulnerable. She's out looking for a nest site, and she's out hunting to feed the brood. Once that first generation of uh, brood grows up and they can go out and forage, queen will stay in the nest for the summer and they'll continue to grow. And they'll grow and grow. Later in the summer and the fall, the nest will be large. They'll be filling it out, kind of like this. The queen will start laying queens and drones. Those, those uh, new queens and new drones will go out they'll become fertilized and in the fall uh, I'm not sure when exactly what triggers them to leave the nest but sometime late fall early winter the queens will leave the nest spread all across the country okay not all across the country but they'll spread around your neighborhood and uh, look for a place to hibernate to start the cycle again and for years I, I never understood the purpose of the yellow jacket. They grow in these large nests. Uh, they're very menacing, but they die off basically every fall. It never really made sense to me until this year when I helped the good folks at Zanger Farm get rid of a nest just like this one, an underground nest. And uh, briefly about that, we used a little bit of poison-free uh, uh, poison spree poison free wet yellow jacket killer, sorry. Uh, sprayed that down in the hole and I tried a new technique I hadn't tried before. I took a big glass bowl, covered the entrance. So any ones that were still in there that were still alive, the next day they'll try and come out and they'll try and get out. 
they're trapped by the glass bowl. They don't really understand that they're trapped. You just bury it with dirt, they'll dig their way out. But the glass bowl, they just flew around so the workers exhausted themselves or the queens went to sleep at the end of the night. So this is what I found. Over, over the next few weeks, I went back and uh, picked through the, the wreckage and pulled out over 100 living queens that were, I don't know, waiting for the right time to leave to go find a place to hibernate. That was just one nest, and it was maybe eight inches in diameter after I dug it out. A hundred fur queens, and even at 10% survival rate, that's 10 new nests next year. So trapping queens in the spring is a lot easier than dealing with them later. So queen markings, how do you know if you've got a queen? These are the kinds I've seen here, the yellow, the western yellow jacket, more frequently in this area. I'm no biologist. This is what it looks like to me. But we do have, at least around our house, the queens, they've got these very distinct yellow dots. Um, and actually, if anybody would like to see what I do, sorry. Uh, I do have a sample of some of those queens uh, in here, preserved in alcohol. If you want a closer look. The workers, uh, the little black dots are kind of merged with the black band above them. So look for the dots. Again, some of the queens I collected. These are some of the queens that I found after I came back three weeks later. They were huddled around together on a rock under the glass bowl. Uh, this was late October. They were still alive uh, with three weeks of no food. That's another thing is to remember, they're building all these queens in the, in the fall and drums. And those workers are also feeding them. They're fattening them up so they can survive the winter. It, it was cold. I went back at night when it was cold and just picked them up with uh, some kitchen tongs, put them in a glass baggie. Actually didn't kill them. I'm doing an experiment that I'll talk about <laughs> in, a, in a later presentation. Don't know if it'll work, but you never know. So habits and uh, food sources for the yellow jackets, another key to, under, to understanding trapping to help. Workers are out collecting protein. They're scavenging for, uh, to feed the brood. And they do that through regurgitation. They hunt other insects, including our bees. And they scavenge body parts of other insects, including our bees. Workers feed directly on nectar, and you'll see them on flowers, but that's just a small portion of the, of the day. They don't do anything with it. They just it feeds the adult workers. And the workers are also fed by this symbiotic relationship with the, with the brood called trophallaxis. They, they, the brood create this sugary substance that they feed on when they're fed this protein regurgitation by the workers. Oops. So traps, as you got from options, commercially made is what I like to use. You can go homemade. I'm not gonna talk about those here. You can search the internet, a lot of great things. Uh, could be a good, fun project for kids or for those of us who haven't done it yet. And uh, the other trap that I like to consider is the caveman method. Be, be aware of your surroundings, watch for yellow jackets, uh, learn how they fly before they scout. And if you see one, try and smash with a big rock. That, that's actually uh, worked for me to, to get a couple of queens. I've been out in the, in the spring with a flannel jacket on and I'll see one flying around and I'll follow it and if I see it land I'll throw my flannel on top of it and beat the heck out of it with a rock or piece of wood till I'm brave enough to pick through the wreckage and make sure I finish them off because they're probably mad. This is a style of commercial trap that I really like. They're easy to use. They last a long time. You can use a, a cartridge with a commercial attractant in it. It says it lasts up to 10 weeks. You can use just the attractant and put it on a cotton ball inside and a little cup in the bottom uh, down there. Or you can use any other sort of protein source, try different things, see what attracts them. 
Uh, but things like, uh, you know, meats that you might have in the fridge, they'll dry out, so you, you need to change them more frequently. Just some more photos of the same brand. They've also got this disposable trap. Um, it seemed to work really well this summer. We had a neighbor who had a nest nearby, and it, it, did, it did trap some of the workers fairly well. Don't think it worked all summer. I don't know if it'll work on queens. Last year I used, I was lazy and I just used uh, commercial attractant in my traps. Didn't catch any queens. Could have been user error, or it could be the queens just don't like commercial attractants. I'm gonna try the bag trap this spring and see if any work, but I'm gonna put most of my effort into uh, using meat uh, type protein sources and, and change it out regularly. I wanted to mention these, I've been seeing these the last few years, wasp, hornet, yellow jacket nests, uh, traps, they're kind of combined. I don't personally know enough about them. Uh, we don't have hornets, uh, we don't have any problems around our house other than yellow jackets, so that's all I trap. And we've got these beneficial wasps at our house and I would be devastated to find one of these guys in our in one of these traps. So personally, I don't want to use these, but if you do have hornets, or uh, you might want to give these a try. This is my favorite uh, new caveman type of trap. <laughs> it's a glass, uh, gas powered plumber's torch. You turn the gas on, turn the safety off, put, push the yellow button, and you get about 2,000 <laughs> degrees worth of flame coming out the front. Um, every time I go out in the spring this year to visit our bees, I bring it with me and sit and watch, and I pick off a yellow jacket or two that came to scavenge. So, bait options. Remember, we're targeting yellow jacket queens as a preventative measure, and workers as a control measure should you have a, a nest uh, form near you, and you, you see bird workers coming to manage your hives later in the season. So let's give them what they're looking for. They spend almost all of their day with one mission, and that's to feed the brood. So that's going to be protein sources. Um, so use it. Try anything that you've got ready at hand, or if you don't eat meat, try some canned meats. Uh, you can also try the commercial mates, but um, you know, until I try that with more regularity with trapping queens, I don't want to say whether how, how well that commercial works on the queens. I came across a study by University of California Riverside, and they they studied a lot of different canned meats, uh, cat foods, and they said that the Swansons canned minced white chicken and Frisky's Ocean Whitefish Dinner were consistently the most acceptable uh, that, that brought in the most yellow jackets. So, I'm, last year I tried the Swansons and it worked great and I was cheap and I just left it in the fridge and kept reusing it and I think it got old and I uh, ended up catching more flies at the end of the summer than yellow jackets. So, I'm going to take that tip to heart this year and maybe try freezing some and, or just using more of it. So some tap, trap tips that I found from my good friends in Canada, some things that I didn't really know or try uh, that I'd like to point out. They say hang traps two to four feet above the ground, which makes sense as that's where they're foraging for other insects. Um, and they say place traps in sunny areas when the temperature is below 80 to 85, which you know, when your traps get too hot, your meat's going to dry out, it's going to lose its scent. And when it's warmer, place them in the shade. So, uh, be happy to take any questions. This is uh, a little link to uh, a place at work where I've, I've set up where you can uh, copy this PowerPoint presentation. Also converted it to a PDF, which is a smaller size and probably easier to use. Feel free to uh, 
download, bring more, distribute, uh, whatever you like. So are you already doing Good question. And I think I skipped over that. So the question is, how early do you start trapping? I've always heard early spring, and one of the things that I've been thinking now is if, if you see your, if your bees are fine, those queens are probably fine. I've noticed uh, above 50 degrees. Um, that's, um, they're going to be out. I would probably wouldn't hurt to be trapping on nice days like these, but um, in reality, if there are any queens who are fooled by this kind of nice weather we've been having, and then it's going to be cold. They may be going out, they may find a nest site, and they might get trapped in there for a couple of weeks without food when it's too cold to fly. Any brood they have at that point are probably going to die off. But I think once we start getting more regular temperatures and they can be out there flying more regularly above 50 degrees and hunting, uh, I think that's good. So I've always thought as early as March and into June if we've got a really cold and nasty spring and they might not be out. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, I, I think as beekeepers, if you've got bees, you're out there more often, you're watching, and, you know, you see your bees flying, think it might be a time to try to try.